Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Quincy in the Park Place neighborhood. This is the subject of some of the walking tours that are going through historic Quincy right now. Uh, Vicki Ebbing is working with the Historical Society of Quincy and Adams County putting these walking tours together. And during this Illinois story, we're going to cherry pick some of these neighborhoods and show some of the most interesting parts of old Quincy. Vicki, you've been uh, doing this a while. I think I did a walking tour with you some years ago. So you've been, you love the research. Don't I you? do, I do. It's fun to do. It's fun to find, you know, where the, the, the little hidden histories of, of the Quint houses in Quincy. You picked Park Place. Why? Mm -hmm. Park Place is um, one of the last brick boulevards in Quincy, and um, it's a very interesting, sto interesting story in itself. And then also the history of the home owners mm -hmm. and the beauty of the homes. It's we're, amazing. We're on, let's see, we're right on 12th Street on the east on the east side of Quincy, right? And, right. and, and just a little bit south, right. a little bit on the south side. Mm -hmm. and as you can see, it's a long boulevard here. And you mentioned the brick streets. The brick streets are, are, are part of the original layout, weren't they? Yes, these are the original brick streets. Um, it was the first Covenant neighborhood in Quincy. And they, the houses are each required to sit back so far. Mm -hmm. They had to be stone or brick. Mm -hmm. There was a minimum cost and they had to be two stories tall. And their um, carriage houses all had to be entered from the alleys behind them. Wow, that's they, pretty strict. Yeah. This neighborhood is what, circa 1890 or mm -hmm, so? Okay. Mm -hmm. The first two that you see are, are this one with, it, it's got the tower and it has a, a circular window, which right. kind of looks unusual to me. Yes, I don't know anything yes. about it. Yes, this but. was one of the first houses built in the neighborhood. He was one of the, of the people who um, designed the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. and it was the Crutenden house. Uh -huh. And then next to it is the Flynn house. And they're just beautiful homes that um, the whole neighborhood. And then next to it is the Mankey house and it's all stone because of the Mankey Stone and Lime mm -hmm. Company. Oh, okay, so, all right. And, and so the story goes on and on as we go around the uh -huh. neighborhood. And, and we cover that a little, we just touch on it a little yeah. bit. These would, the have, these would have been some, some rather wealthy Quincy people, yes, right? Yes, they were. Yes, they um, were. And they had all kinds of professions. You mentioned the, the Menkes. Uh -huh. they, they had a stone company. Is yes, that what they yes, had? Yes, yes, yes. Others would have been professionals, either business owners or lawyers or doctors right, or right, et cetera. Right. Um, and Park Place goes for, for roughly how Two many blocks? blocks? Two, Two blocks. Two blocks. Okay, yes. well, let's walk that way. Okay. Okay, Vicki, considering this neighborhood was started in about 1890, this makes this one of the, one of the newer Right. It was one of the later ones built. This is Joseph and Emma Luby's house. And Joseph was um, in the family business of grocery and wines. Uh -huh. And he specialized in altar wines. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, you wouldn't think that there'd be that much market, but I guess, you know, I guess there could uh, be. <laughs> Quincy's a big cat, well, or is still, and yeah. was more so even then, a big Catholic town. Sure. And so, you know, there were a lot of churches in Quincy and yeah, they sold a I, lot of wine. Queen, the Queen Anne and, and yeah, that wraparound porch is kind of common it's for that time. Beautiful. Isn't it? That's wonderful. It's a beautiful house. Yeah. As we go up the boulevard here, one of the next, what's it's noisy, that brick's noisy. It is noisy. One of the next um, houses that you like to point out is this, speaking of porches, this massive uh, over overhang made yes. of brick and, and pillars. And it's a buff colored house. Buff colored tapestry brick. With that wonderful tile roof. Oh mm -hmm. man, it's huge. That's a big house. It is. This one recently sold. Uh huh. And is the Frank and Rose Dick house. And when we go to the Dick Brewery, this is one of the oh, family this homes. This was the brewery family, huh? Well, one of them. There one are of many, them. They, many, okay, many, well, many, they, many. They were successful, weren't they? Right. And this house was designed in 1910 by George, and built in 1910 by George Bear, designed by George Berensmeyer. That's a familiar name. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the construction cost was, guess how much? Well, I'm going to say uh, $45,000. 11. <laughs> 11,000? 11,000. Wow, it might as well likely be $11. Exactly. You know? Oh, that's exactly. remarkable. It has the wonderful original tile roof. Mm -hmm. It's just recently sold. The people who had it before had lived in it for 
of over 50 yeah. years and now it has a young family living in there. Yeah. So I, I bet I'm, they paid more than 11000 I bet they more. did. <laughs> but it's a beautiful home. Vicki, up at the corner of South 14th and Park Place, it's, it's, a, it's a majestic looking house, but it didn't always look that way, did it? No, it, it was awful for years. I remember growing up, I'd come by here on the school bus because junior high is just around the corner from us, and it was covered in pink aluminum siding. Ooh, ooh. They, they might have done that on purpose just to make people mad. Could be, could be. <laughs> so I've heard stories that it's, mm -hmm. that's the case. Now the current owners have removed all the siding and Beautiful. rehabbed the whole interior and it's just a majestic house. You know, house. why you would cover up that brick, it looks like it's in terrific shape. Yep. Okay, of course, that's because it had siding on it. Exactly. Well, <laughs> well and, and I also heard that he got a really good deal on that siding. Maybe he might have been a person who sold it even, yeah, you know. Yeah. And <laughs> so, so this was built by a bank cashier? Bank cashier. Oh, that was a high paying job back uh -huh, then, uh -huh. obviously. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, it's a gorgeous house. Beautiful porch, wraps around has, you know, it's just mm -hmm. very pretty. Well, Vicki, we're just a few blocks from Park Place, mm -hmm. and we've just gone west, closer to the river. Right. And it's not one of the outstanding features you see is almost an entire block of big brick buildings, which used to be the Dick Brothers Brewing Company. That huh? is correct. The Dick Brothers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're not brewing anymore, are they? No, unfortunately. But there are people in Quincy that supposedly have the recipe and are brewing it, and they're wanting to eventually start a no small. No kidding. So they're doing small, small microbrewery. And, and if it's if it's good enough, they mm -hmm. may they may mm -hmm. take it bigger, huh? Right, right. This would have been in its heyday in the what 1880s, I 1888 guess. 1888 was its heyday. Would have been a big operation. It was a big operation. It was actually at one time. The story I've heard is that at one time it was bigger than Bush in St. Louis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, maybe the biggest uh, the biggest brewery in Illinois. Yes. It was. Okay. They had with a small racking house. Uh -huh. Then they then then there's a huge stock house. Mm -hmm. And then next to that there's a storage house. And then and then half of that is the brew house. Right. And those buildings are are now being used for other purposes. Right. I guess, huh? Right. The brew house stock storage house area is now an art gallery, and the Solano gallery, and she has beautiful art in there. Is that and right? And has really done nice things with this with this building. Mm -hmm. Well, let's move up a little bit. Okay. Because up on the corner, if we look past that, uh, the building you were just talking about, there's looks like it would have been a, an office building or an administration building. Right. That's the office building and for Dick Brothers. And it's got some style. Breweries. It's got some style. It's a very it. pretty building. Yeah. Full of copper. All, the, all, all that that you see in the green is a copper mm -hmm. that's been patinaed. And... It's a beautiful building. Now it's a it's a CPA's office. Oh, so it's being used. That, that's good. Yes, it's being yes. used. Oh yeah. Adaptive reuse yeah. is what we do at Quincy. <laughs> and and on and on this side over here, there's another big we, we can't get a, a real good look at it, but on this side there's a big building and this would have been the bottling house. The bottling house. Uh -huh. Yes, and the bottling house is for sale right now. To the right person with a creative mind. I have all sorts of ideas, but don't have the pocketbook to go well, with it. Well, <laughs> it's, it's really big. Have you ever been in there? Yes, yes. Oh, man. Well, and does it have style? It does, it does. And actually, in the basement, I wish I could take you in there. In the basement, there are domed, coffered ceilings that are just glorious down there. You know, speaking of going inside, in August every year, there's an opportunity to, to go in here. Is it, is it the JCs or it, one of the it groups? It is the Rotary Club. The Rotary Club. Rotary Club puts on the, it's called Brewfest or something uh -huh. of that nature. And um, they block these streets off. People park all around and they have oompa bands and lots of beer and just, it's a great and time. And an opportunity to go inside like sure. where the caves were yes, and right. where the you spring go, water came right, up and right, all that. Right, right, You get to How go all the way down. It it's beautiful. Yeah. and But be prepared to stand in line. Yeah. Because people, everyone wants to see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I bet. You know, you can't run a brewery without employees. That's right. And the employees want to live, maybe want to live close to work. Right. They don't have a lot of money in many cases. Exactly. So oftentimes what you end up is over your shoulder you see employee housing. Exactly. And, and Mr. Trapp was an investor and he built all these little shotguns, shotgun cottages, and you know, most of them still look today as they looked then, and mm -hmm. they're just as cute as can be, and, and uh, you know, they're, they're actually owned by people, but I think a lot of them are still rental property. 
one, one thing we didn't mention when we were looking at the brewery, now these folks relied on the brewery for their living. Uh -huh. The brewery, when, pro, when Prohibition came along, the brewery, like other breweries, had to either try to do something else or close down. They made different things. Um, some breweries made root beer, you know, or sarsaparilla, mm -hmm. or things like mm -hmm. that, you know. But um, this brewery, they had another business called the Teleco Mills that was down on the riverfront, and they moved a lot of their employees down there so they could keep the good ones mm -hmm. till Prohibition ended. They knew it would end. Yeah, and, so. and, and they, they tried to brew beer again, didn't yes, they? Yes, they, they did. They went back into business. They did. But then, unfortunately for the Dicks and for their employees, mm -hmm. didn't work out. Didn't work out. They, they decided not to use the same spring water for some reason. The spring's right there, but I don't know if it dried up or what the problem mm -hmm. was, and they, moved, they, they got water from somewhere else, yeah. and then... It didn't taste the same. Yeah, yeah. So. too bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, employees without work and the Dick yeah. family without a business. Exactly. Huh? Vicki, the Dicks apparently liked this piece of property. They did. It was close to work. It, they could walk down to work. They could see it. They liked it so much, though, they tore the house down, which was a pretty grand house, yes. to build this one. Right. They Augie, Augie, August Dick, or Manny, as he went by, um, decided he wanted a newer house than mm -hmm. his grandma and grandpa's. So after they passed away, he tore it down and built this one. Mm -hmm. This one, I, I get just guessed, it looked like it was built in the 1920s. It was actually 1917, mm -hmm. but it was, you know, late teens. Yeah. And it's a beautiful prairie style, and yeah. um, the current owners have done lots of work in this particular neighborhood, and they take really good care of that house it's as well. It's beautiful. Yep. What the, one thing they have done is they, they bought these, we talked about those little road, those little bungalows that mm -hmm. were built for the employees. Little shotguns. These were here, and, mm -hmm. and they've restored those, and, yes. and they look like they're in really good condition. The now. whole block. They've, they pretty much have restored every house in the whole block, mm -hmm. and they are now rental properties, but... Good. I'm sure if the price were right, Claire would sell them. Yeah, but no, good for them, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they've, they've really she, made the neighborhood very nice. Yep. And, and boy, you can tell by the way they keep their own home. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's spotless. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's a gorgeous house. Wonderful people. Who now, there's, now, there's more of the Dick family homes to there see, are. right? Well, we're going to go up to State Street now. Let's walk. <laughs> okay. Vicki, at State Street and South 11th, you can't miss this one because it doesn't look like any other house I've seen in Quincy. This one is the Albert and Anna Dick home. His father built this, had this house built for them the year they were married. Ah. So it's a gorgeous house full of lots of ornate woodwork and beautiful stained glass. Mm -hmm. I can say the stained glass, isn't it nice that it's, it's, it's been able to remain all these years? Yes. It does look beautiful. Yes. Um, but it's had a kind of a rocky history because it's been lived in, not lived in. It's mm -hmm. kind of had a, a strange... Uh, Yes, Go, it? it has, but now it's it's back to being a single family home mm -hmm. and they recently moved into it, so we're hoping they'll put lots of love into it. Yeah, well it looks good. I mean, it yeah. looks like they're moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, they don't build them like that anymore. No, they That's don't, for sure. they don't. Um, and, and again, Albert could have walked to work if he felt like walking exactly. three blocks because we're still in the neighborhood of the exactly. brewery. Exactly, yeah. we're right. Yeah. We're right around the corner yeah. from it. And there's just down the road, we're going to walk to another one. that it's, It looks like it's even bigger than this one, and that's also one of the Dick houses. That was his father's house. Okay, well, let's go see okay. Dad's house. All right. Well, again, boy, you can't miss this one, Vicki. This one looks a little older. A little older. Saw. 1873. Uh-huh. And, and this was, now, the Dick brothers, some of them came from Germany. They, the three brothers came directly from Germany, and this is Matthew's house. Uh -huh. And he and his family lived here. And in the basement, Matthew had, he liked to make wine. Actually, there's a carriage house behind here. Mm -hmm. And he made wine in the basement of his carriage house. And that's how he died. The he went down, down into where the wine was fermenting, and the fumes got him and killed him. That's wild. But, you know, when you're a brewer, you should not make, you should make beer, you should, not that's, wine. That's right. <laughs> He should have known better. Yes. So, so Ma this was Matthew, right? Uh huh. So, okay. So Matthew, one of the original, he's the founder of the Dick Brothers Brewery, right, one right. of the three brothers. One of the three brothers moved here from Germany, made a fortune, built this home, owned this property, and then built his son's home for him as a wedding present. Yes. Boy, that must be nice. Isn't that nice? Yeah. <laughs> and let's back at this house now. You've been in this home. Yeah, yeah. And I'm looking at that. I'm saying this has got to be have some unique characteristics to it. Upstairs, that's very top, is the ballroom area. 
Mm -hmm. And one of my friends had an apartment up there, and it was just the view from up there is spectacular. And that up th that third floor is is one apartment, huh? And one it goes apartment. all the way back. Yep. Yeah. Neat. Vicky, let's move from the Dick family to the Schott family, another well-known Quincy right. business family. Right. Uh, how did they? What business were they in? How did they make their money? They had shop manufacturing, which was a saddlery company where they made saddles and the horse collars and all of that for horses in the late mid to late 1800s. That's how they made their fortune, okay. especially selling them to the government for the Civil War. Oh, sure, that'd be a huge market. Mm -hmm. So they were down on the river, right? Right, in, in, uh, close in Central to the river. Business District, up, up on the hill, uh -huh. right across from Tiramisu. So they okay. So they could they, they 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 brought the leather in probably by maybe by the river and they shipped the saddles out by river more probably, than likely. Probably, probably, huh? yeah. yes. Um, this this house on State Street that we're looking at, this was one of the early shot houses. This was this was the founder of the Shot Saddlery Company, and they um, they had several children. One died. She was a very highly thought of young lady mm -hmm. in the community and she passed away shortly after her father passed away mm -hmm. and then his sons took over the business so you know it was and we'll see his son's houses momentarily because oh, really? once again he built, he built they some built son's houses them. yes okay. yes yes now here's here's what's interesting over here this is this is a mammoth building and i, I was surprised to hear that it's a that it's a carriage house look yep. at the size yep. of it yep isn't that gorgeous and that's a, one of the part of the original house mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and they the grounds. Of, they had quite a bit of property. Mm -hmm. They yeah. did. They owned quite a bit of property. Yeah. And so behind the carriage house is where we'll see that they built the, the homes for the, for uh -huh. the kids. On Kentucky it's Street. It's kind of like they would call it a compound now, yes, but they didn't yes, use that, no, that word no, then, I guess. No, not at all. This home on State Street is just quite a little walking distance from the family estate. It is. It's kind of interesting, right down the block. isn't it? I wonder if maybe they didn't own all this property at one time, because we're many houses away. They say that he bought the property actually from John Wood when John Wood died in 18, uh, 1880. Uh-huh. So, but that house is 1873, so maybe they sold yeah. it off before he died. Yeah, and, and so. this one, considerably smaller <coughs> and simpler mm -hmm. than, uh, than a lot of the family. Who, right. who, who owned this one? This was Aunt Tani, as she was called. Tani. It was Antoinette, and she was a shot. But she married, uh -huh. and this was her husband's house, and when they got married, they moved here. Ah, okay, and he didn't join the family business. He did something else, huh? Not at first, but then after her father died, then he became part of the business. I think I he was like the treasurer mm -hmm. and was, you know, kind of in the banking numbers game and that sort of thing. Yeah. This house, you can tell it's been cared for through the years. Yes, it looks it like has. it's in great condition. It is in great condition. It's very well, very well taken care of. Okay, we're on Kentucky Street now. Yes. Behind the big shot house that we saw that had the big carriage house. Exactly. Okay. And so his property included all of this on Kentucky Street right. too, where he proceeded to build homes for the kids. Yes. Wow, aren't they nice? And wedding gifts. And this was his son, John. The one this on was the his right. his daughter, Anna. The one on, let's stay with John's here. Uh -huh. The one on the right is John. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of history on John, maybe. John you... ended up taking over the company after, after his father passed away mm -hmm. and was very successful. This house actually had a fire. The roof oh. burnt off. And the current owners, um, well, the last two owners are friends of mine and mm -hmm. say you can still see charred, charred, studs up in the uh -huh. attic and and, uh, and of course when you have your house tour since you know these people maybe uh -huh. they'll let the folks in Are they, you, have you it, asked it, them yet? we we haven't asked yet <laughs> we we do that shortly beforehand and every now and then an owner is kind enough to open their doors yeah. and let us in yeah and uh, okay so that was we said tom Okay, John. He, John, he took uh -huh. over the business, and this one this over here is a Anna. daughter. Uh -huh. Anna. And okay. when she and her husband married, he was another one who was a treasurer type person, and um, he was in a different business till Dad died, and then he came into the business as well mm -hmm. as the treasurer. Mm -hmm. He was a banker. Man, that business supported a lot of people. It did. It was a very big business. Yeah, they did the tannery and the saddle making. I mean, they started from scratch and mm -hmm. they did all that. Mm -hmm. And then, there, the, actually, the property must have extended across the street, That's too, right. because this is also one I, of the shots. And I sometimes wonder if they didn't put the street in for themselves because they owned all both sides. So mm -hmm. it's it, And that was not unheard of in those days. And this underneath of here is brick. So. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so, and this is a shot. This child. is Ted Schott's Tom, house, Ted. and he was one of the brothers as well. And um, the, 
the um, exhibit that will be at the Historical Society will feature photographs that Ted took. Oh, and he was a photographer. He huh? was well. It wasn't his profession, but he he loved taking. He liked it, and he was pretty good at and it. And he was very good. And at the it. historical society still has a lot of his photographs. Yes, enough yes. to a lot, enough for a special exhibit. Exactly, and the, there's actually a book that the Herald Wig put out that sold out that um, is of his photographs mm -hmm. that the historical society. So has. sometime in this fall, uh -huh. the historical society will in have September, that on exhibit. They will. Terrific. So they'll okay. have all this on exhibit. Yeah. And we have one more. Okay, let's go. Okay. Four rings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we're about a oh, hundred yards. Yeah, half block, hundred yards from the other shot property, and mm -hmm. springs up another one. Yes, this is this is Robert Schott's house, and he was one of the sons of John, and he built this bungalow, which is a large bungalow, it as is. you can see. It is beautiful. It is a beautiful bungalow, well maintained. Yeah. For many years after Mr. Schott passed away, it was tied up in the trust and it was boarded up and grown up. This whole area was grown up in weeds. Oh man. It was just a mess. They called it a haunted house. Uh -huh. And then um, a, an investor sort of started working on it and then the people who live here now took over and finished it up oh, and they brought got a it find. back to its They got a find, didn't yes. they? Yes, yes. Yeah, it, it just looks like it's been cared for it, really lovingly. It's a yeah, beautiful, beautiful home. Well, this and, and the other homes will be on the tours that you're doing, yes, which we will yes. tell the audience about. Thank uh -huh. you so much. Thank you, Mark. Okay, Vicki, good luck with you. And, you. and recall, uh, if, if you're interested in this, we just cherry-picked. This is just a little bit of each of these walking tours, but it's the first Saturday of the month through the summer. You can uh, meet at the uh, Historical Society of Quincy and Adams County at the John Wood Mansion and uh, go on these tours. They take a couple of hours, and there will be three of them. So if this interests you, you'll find them on the first Saturday of each month through the summer. With another Illinois story in Quincy, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.